Hello out to all you wonderful people. This is Andre the Game I Dig. I thank you once again for lending me your time and your ear listening into another Gamer's Thoughts discussion. And this one's going to be looking a little bit more inward than outward for the subject today. Um, obviously, I'm going to be looking outward at certain things in relation to the subject I'm going to be talking about. But most of this is going to be more inwardly focused at the moment. Uh, mostly because I've heard often from people that, hey, your, your content should get more views. You should have more subscribers. People should listen to the things that you say. I've seen those messages pretty often. And I do appreciate it. And I like it does does come off pretty wholesome when people say that type of stuff to you and I do appreciate it. like I'm never going to say I don't but there are things that I realize with the naming of my channel and my moniker as it were that people draw issue with um in general, just because if you do a Google search on my name, you'll find a lot of stuff slamming people that talk about ideas like I do. Um, so I, I know that that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> like, that's really a thing. Uh, mostly because people that talk about the ideas come off as arrogant um, ignorant, unknowledgeable, and assuming. Which, I guess, sometimes I can fit into those categories. I know I don't always fit into them. But there are definitely times where I can see how my personality has come through, or could come through to people like that. Being the game idea guy. Um... <clears throat> And I like once I came to that realization, I got being okay with my channel being small. Like, of course, I want my channel, my YouTube channel, and anything I'm on as far as social media, I want it to grow because I do think that the ideas that I present and the things that I talk about are worth talking about. But. You know, hey, I'm just happy that there's a platform available to me to express my thoughts and opinions. That's how I look at it. Like, yeah, I would love for more people to hear the things that I talk about. And hell, I would love to be able to do this as like a full-time thing if I could. But that option's not available to me. But it's also not something that I just expect I, did, I came into YouTube with the wrong mindset when I first started. I figured, hey, since I, I have a decent hold on what I'm talking about, I, I kind of know things pretty well. I, I keep a decent grasp on history. I should make it big. Wrong mindset to start off with. And, I, and I'll admit that that was how I started. My channel went practically nowhere. But I kept at it because I still found enjoyment in it. And it's something that I'll keep doing until I am old to the point where I can't. Or I just don't find enjoyment in it anymore. One of those two things. But I do, again, just like the ability to be able to spread my thoughts and ideas. Someone finds it and they agree, cool. Somebody finds it and they disagree, also cool. More so I care about just the fact that I can express what I want to say. And <laughs> it's been something that has been very helpful to me just to, to have a, a place where I can put these things to, to word. And like even if I didn't really build any sort of following or didn't have anybody to listen to my videos, I'd probably still be making them. 
the interactions are great and I do know that I have made some genuine friends through having started working on doing things with YouTube and other platforms. Hell, I even I started out actually doing editorials for uh, associated content, which became Yahoo Voices and then got closed down a few years later. I started out doing that because, I again, I just needed a place to spread my thoughts and ideas. And I enjoyed doing it. I wonder if I should get back into that. I'm pretty sure I could probably set up a WordPress and do that at some point. But we'll move along with that. But like, it was basically blogging, but it was they were considered editorials because they were opinion pieces. Um, <clears throat> I've always liked talking about different things and brainstorming stuff that could be exciting that could be interesting to people or that just, you know, makes sense in the grander scheme of things and the overall picture. Heck, even before, well before I even had my YouTube channel and I remember doing this when I was a kid. Like, I, I had brainstormed about basically uh, VR consoles. A long time ago. Like, actually, VR consoles to the extreme. Like, where you could put on a headset and also, like, a full sensory suit that will allow your body to feel different things happening in the game. I know we're still a little bit off from that technology, but we're not too far as far as how things have advanced. I I lost that journal. I wrote it in so long ago, but I remember the concept. I think I called it the mind box or something like that. Um, (laughs) And if they ever get to the the point where technology allows you to taste things that aren't there and smell things that aren't there, then the full concept will be realized. Um, (laughs) But... It was definitely something I had always done. But, like, I even remember back when my eldest brother first got our original Sega CD to go on to our Sega Genesis. And I I was still a gamer at that point. I was still playing video games. But, (laughs) But as the little kid I was at the time... I I literally made paper sleeves and paper discs to go in those sleeves, imagining different types of game concepts to go on the Sega CD. I remember doing that because my brother, I think, saw it and started laughing. Not because he was, like, trying to, like, you know, put me down or anything. He laughed because it was just... It wasn't a creativity that he, people in my family had seen out of me before. And I just started doing it out of nowhere. I think I made like 20 or 30 of those things. Like with just like different game titles and stuff like that. Um, so this, this notion of me being the person to talk about video game ideas and stuff like that, that has always been ingrained in me. I mean, I used to do it for comic books and stuff way back when, but this has technically always been ingrained with me. And I don't remember if I fully went over this or not, but when it really hit was actually uh, me seeing the Fighter Maker game for PS2. I immediately saw that game and over-imagined what it was capable of doing like um, cause I, I had seen it in the store with my father like uh, like, I think it was FYE we were in and the game was sitting on the shelf for like I think 30 bucks at the time and 
the first time we saw it, he said, well, I don't have the money for it, so I can't get it right now. But we, I think we ended up back in that same store like a month or so after that, and he got it for me. Like, I didn't even, I had, at that point, I stopped thinking about even getting it. <laughs> and he ended up getting it for me. Now, in between me seeing that and, and actually getting it, I had written out from start to finish a full proposal for a fighting game based on just seeing that one package. I actually still have the notebooks that I wrote those in somewhere. Because even though well, I got now, Fighter Maker 2 was a disappointment to me. <laughs> because it, did, it wasn't capable of doing any of the things I imagined it was capable of. But it had sparked the interest in developing concepts. It, it really truly did. And... I think once I finished the first concept, which was a fighting game, I even I wrote out a prequel concept to the fighting game that was a beat 'em up, and then I did two more written out as fighting games and another beat 'em up, and I still have all of what I retained from creating the concept in my head. But I also do have the notebooks available. But like I imagined this game or series that had conceptualized itself in my head six to seven games out as far as the fighting game series and three games out as far as the beat 'em up side. I mean, when I started imagining this concept, I didn't even have a computer, so writing it out was the only thing I could really do. Um... <laughs> Even as I got older, like, I got to a point where I just kept writing everything because it just, I had already started the process that way, so I stuck with it. And I think I had I had imagined or came up with, like, upwards of, like, a hundred different character concepts. Might be a little bit more than that. As I am so sidetracked from the main point of this. But... I knew what I liked in games and had an idea for how things could be improved quite often. Like even back in during the, the days of the NES and the Genesis and SNES, I was always thinking up ways that certain games could be better. Or certain ways that, like, things could be fixed with games that I liked. It was always in my head. But I think that just the, the thing I got sidetracked on with Fighter Maker 2 and the, the concept I came up with, it inspired me to really push my imagination in thinking about how these things would work. And I mean, I'm, I'm very certain that game designers have those same epiphany moments. There's just this one thing that happens and it's like, oh, that would be awesome to do. But myself, I let my mind wander mostly into the imaginative side of things. And I didn't really work on the technical skills that would allow me to do it. Which I'm doing currently, but like I'm actually working on the technical skill side of things at the moment, just not as fast as I would like to. Because you gotta start from somewhere. I mean, like I've said to people before, I've all I've dabbled in several different game engines just to get a feel for what it's like to work on development of something. And I may not always do 
anything with great with with putting together a full scale game. Mostly just because I tend tend to have too many things going on in my head at once. But it's also why I enjoy games that have customizable aspects to them that allow you to build your own stuff within the game. So, like, things like Halo having to forge, I'm always a proponent for user-generated content because of stuff like that. And as far as I, I'm concerned, Game Builder Garage and Dreams are great concepts for people to get started in developing games. So was Project Spark had Microsoft stuck with it and supported it properly. I, th I think that they should bring it back. It's a sellable engine for your specific platform. That you can make money off of. The only thing that I will say. That I think. All of the companies should do. Is with these engines. That they create for their specific platforms. If you're going to sell them. Allow people. To be able to sell the games that they make. It doesn't have to be. A, a large price. Because you're giving simple tools. So, like, cut them off somewhere between having somewhere between a dollar and five bucks and have a cutoff point. That's all you got to do. And <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked again. <laughs> but I, I imagine anyone listening is, is gathering how my mind works. Like, once I start thinking about something like that, especially with gaming and development and stuff like that, I start to think very deeply into it. That's why I do have, even among the videos that I've posted with Pitch for Switch, my PlayStation recommendation, Wood Rock for Xbox, game ideas that work on the Wii U, 3DS game ideas, Why You Know Game, God damn I have so many series <laughs> but you'll find that I have my own original concepts in some of those as well as concepts that would fit particular franchises very well on top of me saying well hey this game is here I can see how it operates and I see how these these small changes that could be made to it that would make it operate well for these other platforms. That would take advantage of the system features of these particular platforms. So I just... I thoroughly enjoy doing it. It's a hobby in and of itself outside of me posting about it or making content from it. And it kind of always has been. My mind is one that roams to different places. And I could have three to four different thoughts at the same time. But still be able to articulate and focus on one when needed. But I, I guess it's just more I want the people who do follow me, to, that do engage with my content, to know more directly about me. Um, I might end up starting to do Q&As. Like, I, I did a couple of them way back. But I may just start that over and do Q&As, like do a monthly one for people that are interested. Because I think it would be a nice way to engage with people that are part of my socials that are part of my discord and stuff that follow me and interact I think it would be a good way one to give people answers to questions that they really want to ask me and on top of that it gives me more interaction with the people that do follow my stuff 
So it's an opportunity for both sides to be able to have input, which is what I really enjoy. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and end things here. Thank you guys very much for listening in and your patience with my rambling because I know I do ramble a lot once I get going. Um, so thank you very much for listening in. Keep your eyes and ears out for more stuff from me. And until the next time, enjoy your games. Peace out, everybody.